This is The Sand Pit. I'm your host, Sean Cole, and today we are here to get to the bottom of the question of what is the fastest shifting method in iRacing. So I've been doing my Mazda MX-5 series videos, and you've seen those races perhaps, and I've had a lot of comments from people talking about the way I shift or the shifting going on during these races. For the record, I use auto blip or have been in that series, but people have been making comments that I'd be faster if I were to remove the shifting aid altogether. Now, instead of just doing just that and removing the auto clutch or auto blip feature from my racing, I decided to go ahead and take an opportunity and actually measure the differences between the four different driving methods available in iRacing. So if you go to iRacing and you go into the options or the drive tab, under driving aids, there's a section called shift aid. And in this drop down, there are four choices to use in the sim, each making the shifting of the car drastically different. Within those selections, we have none, as in no driving aid, auto clutch, auto blip, or auto shift. Now the comments in those recent races broke into two main categories. Number one, that I was leaving time on the track using auto blip, not shifting as fast as I could with no driving aid. And the other was the audible sound, that ear cringing sound when I'd leave the throttle wide open, click the shifter, and you'd hear noises out of a race car that you don't really want to hear. And that did annoy people and rightfully so. So this piece here, this isn't a lesson on how to shift. This is really me looking at the differences in shifting types and what they really boil down to when on track. Now I have to disclaim things. The test is only as good as the driver and that's me. I'm not the most consistent driver in the world. I do steamroll apexes from time to time. I am not an alien and I'm not going to be using telemetry to look at the every thousandth of a second in differences. What I am doing is I'm looking at overall lap times and I'm going by driver input. What am I feeling differently in the car and how does that result in the lap times? That is the way we're going to break down this and the way we're going to look at the differences between the different methods. And despite each type of shifting acting differently, it will also be affected by the type of car you're in. For example, if you're in a Formula One car, it doesn't even use a clutch to shift and you're going to see less of an effect using different driving aids than you would in, say, the MX-5, where you're going to notice a big difference in the speed of the shifting, the pull of the car out of the corner, you're going to see a difference in lap times and even in realism. So let's start with the different types of shifting in iRacing, starting with auto shifting. In auto shift mode, the car will up and down shift automatically, just like an automatic transmission in real life. You are not in control of the shifts or gear selection. It is handled by the car with pre-mapped conditions for the shifts. The next level of shift aid is auto clutch. With auto clutch, the gain will take care of any clutch needs for the car. This can be up and down shifts as well as just getting the car into first gear. When you want to shift, you just press the button or shifter and the game does the rest for you. You can basically always leave the gas on or off, it won't affect the shifts. But at the moment of you pressing a new gear, the game will press in the clutch, removing the engine from the transmission and then engage the new gear and then release the clutch. All you did was press the button. And then on race starts, you can just rev the engine as much as you want. And then as soon as it goes green, you just click the shifter and you're in gear and up and running. You don't even have to use the clutch. The next level of driving aid or shifting aid is auto blip. On auto blip, the game will automatically give a burst of gas to rev match the engine to the new gear that is being selected. This has nothing to do with the clutch but only the revs of the engine during the shifting moment. This is similar to auto clutch, except that the engine is never disconnected from the drive line. This means that if you downshift too early, it can jump or hop or slightly lock up the drive wheels if their speed is faster than the new gear can provide. And during race starts, you will have to first press in the clutch, shift it into gear, then rev up the motor, and when it goes green, you can pull out the clutch and you're underway. You can't just drop it into gear for the race start. And that takes us to the no shifting aid option, or none. This means that the game is doing nothing to help you out at all. For upshifts, you will likely need to use the clutch, and for downshifts, you can use the clutch normally, heel-toe downshift with the clutch, 
or attempt to manually blip the throttle and downshift without a clutch by matching the engine's RPM to the drivetrain. The shifts will depend on your gas, clutch, and shifter work, and if not done properly, the car will refuse to even engage your gear. For race starts, it's the same as auto blip. You'll need to push in the clutch, engage it into gear, rev up the engine, and let out the clutch as soon as it goes green. You're not going to have to pop, or you won't be able to pop it into gear to start the race. So for my testing, I chose the Mazda MX-5 Cup car, a car that I'm running this season, a car I want to improve in, and the whole point of running these videos and really analyzing what we're doing out there. It meant that I'm already up to speed. I don't have to learn the car. I can just get right to, to the testing. But for the track, I actually chose Summit Point Jefferson Circuit. This is a tight technical track with very quick lap times and it was going to make it very easy for comparison. So after an entire day of testing, I wasn't even filming, I was just trying various different shift shifting methods, getting up to speed on the track, I got down to business and I started things off with automatic shifting. And right from the beginning, this was foreign to me on a racetrack. I didn't even have to think about my paddle shifters or taking a finger off the wheel. It was wheel, gas, and brake. That is it. And you would think that would make life easy. However, the timing of the shifts was completely different than what I do or what I expected. I found that on upshifts, the car shifted way too soon, losing plenty of time on the straightaways. I also found that the transmission didn't want to downshift at all constantly leaving me in the wrong gear through the corners. But what was most disheartening was being in the wrong gear getting back on the gas and having to chug my way out of corners with no RPMs or speed out of the motor. You could also hear the amount of time that the transmission is spending during the shifts, again robbing you of speed. And then to top off the ill effects of an automatic transmission was the lack of any engine braking whatsoever. The car was relying on the brakes to both slow down the car and keep it planted on the ground. I found it very easy to drive off the corners under braking and mid-corner. And because the car was always in the wrong gear, I was not getting that audio indication of what the car or how fast I was going through the corners. I ran three different sessions with auto shifting and my best laps from each session fell between 53.225 and 53.716, with my average lap times being between 53.434 and 54.25 seconds, with a combined average lap time of 53.917. I then switched things over to auto clutch. I was now using my paddle shifters and completely ignoring the clutch or doing anything except requesting a new gear. No blipping, no lifting, just shifting. Right out of the gates, I felt more comfortable and more in control of the car than automatic. I could now rev out the engine and shift when I wanted a new gear. This immediately felt faster and more efficient than auto shifting. The car had more power, more pull, and a lot more get up and go. I could tell by my optimal time meter that it was faster because I was always in the green and going quicker. However, despite being faster shifts than the automatic, you could still hear that delay of the automated clutch engaging and that moment before the power was returned to the drive line. The shifts were still elongated. But being able to downshift at the moment that I wanted allowed for much better braking control. And then the car's engine was now starting to do some engine braking between those elongated shifts. On corner entry, being able to select the proper gear was critical, but it also allowed me to use the sound of the engine, the RPM, as an audio clue as to my corner speed. But there were times when the shift came in and caused a slight push or a bit of understeer in the car with the engine carrying too much speed and driving the car slightly under braking. I ran four different sessions in the auto clutch mode, with me running a fourth because I made a real mess out of session number three, but the best lap times had decreased to a range of 53.122 to 53.384, and my average lap times were now between 53.340 and 53.811, 
with a combined average of 53.615. That is about three tenths of a second faster than automatic shifting and still no need for a clutch. I then switched to auto blip. This is the control method that I have been using in this series and honestly, the one I default to the most. I was now going to be using my paddle shifters to shift and I would only need the clutch for pulling out of the pits and for race starts. When I shift, I can leave it wide open. I can blip, and since this car has a rev limiter, I don't have to worry about popping the engine while doing it. You will see that I actually do sometimes blip the throttle, and sometimes I don't. But for upshifts, I leave my foot planted. It sounds terrible, but it actually lets the car lunge on that engine spike. I think it's faster that way. Perhaps one day we'll test that out but the shifts were once again noticeably quicker in sound. And the car once again seemed to have a bit more pull than with the auto clutch as seen often in the optimal meter bar. And again, I was the one determining the gear I was in at all times. But when compared to the auto clutch, this method kept the car planted on the ground better with even more engine braking when slowing down the car. The downshifts under braking were also quicker and again allowed for better engine braking and better traction simultaneously to that. Coming off the corner was near identical in speed, but at that moment of the shift, there was just a slight edge to the auto blip over the auto clutch. But there was an even bigger difference under braking and corner entry that made auto blip a better option. I ran three sessions with auto blip and saw my best lap times drop down to a 52.884 up to a 53.133 and my average lap times drop down to a 53.229 up to a 53.508 with my overall average lap times dropping down to a 53.350 picking up yet another three tenths of a second per lap. And that takes us to no shifting aids at all. I would be using my paddle shifters and for upshifts I will need to time with the shift pressing in the clutch at the same time. Do it wrong and you will be stuck in neutral, needing to re-clutch and shift again. For downshifts I was going to manually blip the throttle, attempting to match the engine's speed to the speed of the drivetrain in the lower gear being engaged. Do this wrong and once again you will be stuck in neutral and in need of shifting again. This can be a real problem under braking leading to spinning out or going off the track. And under acceleration a missed shift can lead to a total loss of momentum and potentially losing positions. But right out of the gates you can hear the difference in the speed of the shift and the proper sounds that go along with it. This also means that the engine is back engaged with the transmission quickest, keeping the power down for better pull and better speed. And just like we have seen under acceleration, we get those same types of advantages under braking. The engine braking is stronger, it's faster and more constant leading to the best braking and the most traction as we turn in for the corners. When the downshifting is done correctly, the shift is done quickly and the car tracks better and takes a better line. I am starting to see a pattern between traction and the amount of time the engine is technically not connected to the drive line. The faster the shifts, the better the cornering as well. But then came the miss shifts. They mostly happen under downshifting and while trying to manually blip the throttle. But these miss shifts led to all sorts of different problems. At times, I wouldn't even know I had missed a gear and I would just find myself in neutral. At other times, I would miss my gear and go flying off the corner as I tried to shift again. And at other times, my second shift would be just too panicked and lead to me spiking the gas and spinning out the car. But lap after lap, I would see that optimal meter bar turn green. I would see lap times with potential of shattering what I had done on auto blip. And when I saw the results, I have to admit I was a bit surprised. I ran four sessions with lap times all over the place. I saw best times as high as 53.447, but more importantly, down to as low as 52.705. 
four tenths of a second faster than with auto blip. My average times were between a very quick 53.168 and a downright slow 53.890 with an overall average lap time of 53.499. That is actually a 0.149 slower average than when using auto blip. But the best laps were shattering all of the different driving aids and lap times. So what did I learn from all of this? Well, hands down, turning off the shifting aids is the fastest way around the track, but it does come at a risk or at certain costs. It will lead to spins, it will lead to crashes, and it will even lead to some race ending moments. However, it is hands down the fastest way around the track. Now, when I look at my average lap times with auto blip, I was a lot more consistent, but well off the pace of using no driving or shifting aid at all. So it's something that I will have to master. I mean, what is the point? The point in this series has been to observe, look for things that we can do better, make improvements, and hopefully be better by the end of the season. And this is absolutely one of the ways that we can be better. So it's a switch that I'm going to have to make. So what does this really mean? Learn to shift, dude. Why am I not a master of my craft? I need to learn to downshift without having the misshift problems that I was having. And when I do, I'm going to be three or four tenths quicker than I would. And again, that is the whole point in this series. So I hope you've learned something today. I hope you've learned at least the differences between the different shifting methods in iRacing. And maybe it'll even encourage you to switch over to one of the faster ones and see if you can make those improvements as well. This is the Sim Pit. I'm Sean Cole, and I'll see you on the track.